You have entered the command zone, your destination for all aspects of Elder Dragon Highlander. Enjoy your stay. I'm going off the rails of a crazy train. <laughs> I'm going <laughs> off the rails of a crazy train. Oh, I, Ozzy. I, 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 I. <laughs> oh, yeah, we should have done it. I, 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 I. Okay, well, we did. Great. It worked. <laughs> Josh was so excited. I got a song for your episode. Uh, perfect song. Oh, yeah. Never. We almost never know the song before we start the episode. You guys don't uh, see us like uh, Google Google's songs with the with word with madness. Yeah. Rack those. Yeah. Uh, I know the Muse song. We've already used it, so I we know. couldn't use it. Uh, it's yeah. so perfect, too. Okay. But anyway, hello and welcome, everyone. You are watching slash listening to the Command Zone podcast. I'm your host, Jimmy Wong. How is it? It's Josh Lee Kwai. We are back to talk about the Rakdos deck. So we're going to do the same thing with every single deck. We did the Soltite Morph deck before. Mm -hmm. Jimmy has broken down the Rakdos Madness deck. We're going to do 10 cards in, 10 cards out. With a budget limit as well. And we're, we're hoping to take this deck if it was a 6 to a 7. Yeah, maybe 7.5 just quickly. Obviously, it can be hyper-tuned, and you can change out a lot of the cards. But this is like... You buy the deck, you want to be playing it right away, but you also want it to be as powerful as you can get it quickly, and yeah. that's what we aim to do here. Without a huge investment as well. So this is definitely geared towards the person that's just buying a new pre-con, or maybe you know someone that just bought the pre-con uh, and you want to upgrade the deck because they went to cardkingdom.com slash command zone to pre-order C19, either the sealed product or the individual cards that they need. Either way, you're going to find all of your product there and Magic Singles sealed as well. And if you buy C19 product right now, if you pre-order it, the sealed product, you're going to get free Life Linker codes that unlock cool backgrounds that are color-coded to each of the decks. Yeah, so the only way to get those Life Linker backgrounds is to order that C19 product. And then I said this before, I'll say it again. That stuff sells out on Card Kingdom every yes. single year. So uh, yes, don't waste any time. Get over there right now. And while you're there... We're going to be talking about the Anya Falconrath deck, and there is an Anya Falconrath playmat from Ultra Pro. There mm -hmm. is a deck box from Ultra Pro. There are sleeves from Ultra Pro. You can theme out your entire battlefield for the deck that you're building. You can do it for Kadena. You can do it for Savine. You can do it for Girid. So get on over there. Find that stuff and really spice up your battlefield. Yeah, and the final way to support the show is at Patreon, patreon.com slash command zone. You are the best supporters that we have. It's directly going straight into making everything that we do possible here at the Command Zone, including this monstrous month. August is always the craziest month for us, but if it wasn't for you all, we wouldn't really be able to get up here and make, I don't know, what is it, like 10, 12 episodes this a month? A lot of stuff? extra videos. Yeah, yeah we could not videos. do without you all, so thank you so much. And we call it one lucky patron every single week on the podcast, or in this case, like multiple. Multiple times per week, <laughs> yeah. many times per week. So this week's episode is dedicated, dedicated to Matthew Burke. Burke. Matthew. Matthew. You rock. Yes. I, I, I. <laughs> Dude, it Matthew, reminds me of my childhood. Matthew. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So let's get into it. It is the Rakdos Madness deck. 10 cards in, 10 cards out, total budget of around $25. And we don't touch the mana base uh, because we actually don't really need to, in a, especially in a two-color deck. Yeah. It's pretty well built. You should be fine with what it is. So let's talk about the new commanders. First up, we've already discussed Anya Falconrath, but we'll read her again for the show. One black and a red for a 1-3 legendary creature vampire with haste. You can tap Anya to discard a card and draw a card. And whenever you discard a card, if it has madness, you untap Anya Falconrath. So anytime you discard a card, not just with Anya, if it has madness, you're going to be able to use her again, as well as cast the madness card if you so wish. It's pretty cool. A lot of value. You can rummage with her, and then if you wheel or something, untap her again, yeah. use her again. Uh, oftentimes when we've been playing these decks, people have used her three, four times in a turn sometimes. Yeah, pretty You don't even have to activate cool. the madness cost on the thing to untap her. She yep. doesn't care. And Only you can discard the card from somewhere else. Yep. Yeah, it's great. It, it You always hit your land drops with this deck, basically. You you can keep, like, sort of tighter hands because you're going to be able to cycle through your deck. Yeah. Uh, the, another commander in the deck that is an option for you to run is Greven, Predator, Captain. Three black red for a 5-5 five, five with Menace, Human Warrior. Greven gets plus X plus O, where X is the amount of life you've lost this turn. Hmm. 
And then whenever Grevin attacks, you may sacrifice another creature. If you do, you draw cards equal to that creature's power, and you lose life equal to that creature's toughness. And then when you lose the life, Grevin will then get bigger get and bigger. get harder. Yeah. yeah. So Grevin, a option for Commander. Uh, I think we'll clearly see that he's not the best option, but he does have card draw sort of stapled onto him, and it's a 5-5 five, five for 5. So the card itself isn't the worst card just by itself. It, it can be in the deck and yeah, still it can do some work. And I think Sacrifice Outlets is actually something that you want to add into the deck. Uh, mm -hmm. There's a lot of graveyard interaction. Next up, we have Chainer Nightmare Adept. Two, a black and a red for a human minion. That's a 3-2. You can discard a card, and you may cast a creature card from your graveyard this turn. Activate this ability only once each turn. And whenever a non-token creature enters the battlefield under your control, if you didn't cast it from your hand, it gains haste until your next turn. This is a lot of strong synergies with Anya and with the deck, and... I considered running it a couple of times when I played the deck. Me too, and I considered making it the leader of the deck as well, but there's so many Madness cards in here. We'll talk about that in a second. Uh, and the last legendary creature in the deck, although you cannot run it of, as the commander right out of the box, because mm -hmm. it is mono black. It's Crick, son of Yogmoth. Costs four, and then three Phyrexian black mana. So four Phyrexian, Phyrexian, Phyrexian. Again, Phyrexian mana can be paid with either a black mana or two life. Mm -hmm. So it can cost four black, 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 or four and six life, or some combination in there. It's a 2-2 two -two legendary creature, horror minion. Has a lifelink. Mm. Get you some of that life back that you spent on the Phyrexian mana. It says, for each black mana in a cost, in a cost, period. Mana cost, activated cost, everything. You may pay two life rather than pay that mana. So... It cheats the mana cost of all your black on anything, basically, to Phyrexian black mana. Wow. Kind of nuts. And it says, whenever you cast a black spell, you put a 1-1 counter on Crick, uh, which does matter because has the lifelink, and you will be spending life to cast spells, so you'll want to get some of that back. This was our consensus, most powerful new legendary creature from the set. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Seems insane because Crick is a four mana card. It's a four drop. Yeah, four drop, and it has in a. It, it reads for some cards in mono black. Play this card right now for, for some free. life, but you get a bunch of cards on the battlefield, and then Crick goes bigger, and you smack people with him, you gain some life back. Yeah, so very very good ca commander synergizes with itself as well. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna do the stats again, like we always do. Do 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 stats stats. stats, stats Thanks Tiago for that graphic. Yeah. So the. This deck, again, they're all really well-built decks this year. Uh, Rakdos is a little bit less on the um, sort of the ramp and card draw side. There are, there are six ramp spells, seven ways to draw cards, two board wipes, which is definitely on the lower end, and 13 kinds of targeted removal. There's a lot of removal. But this is a great start for a Rakdos deck. It's black and red. These are the things that you are going to be suffering from the most. And because Anya has a way to filter cards and essentially draw cards with Madness... It makes it really, really good, and the deck hums and just goes right out the box um, and works well. So I'm so glad that Anya exists. It's a great black-red card. I could see it being played in a lot of Rakdos decks, Sans Madness, because just a 1-3 haste that you can draw a discard, and with additional upside seems pretty darn good. Yeah, the only one of those stats that really stands out, well, I guess there's two, but Ramp I wish was a little bit higher, mm -hmm. and Board Wipes maybe one or two more, but we're within one or two of what I would want, yeah, basically. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, again, we said this last episode, but... A lot more fun for us because we don't have to recommend a bunch of like boring. Yeah. Please play a signet. It's yeah, like, cool. exactly. Yeah, That's anyone, a boring card to tell people to add to yeah. their deck. So. so here are the stats in relation to who we think you should run as the commander. And this one is a pretty obvious one. There are 23 madness cards or cards that want to be discarded. Mm, that tells you right there, kind of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then there's eight payoff cards that are going to reward you for discarding those cards or you want things in your graveyard. Um, there are six ways to discard cards outside of Anya. Uh, and let's talk about this. So Chainer, I think, is the closest to being an argument that you could run this as the main... Uh, However I'm throwing it, it's not... Commander of your deck. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I think it would require way too much of you to sort of take the deck apart, take too many Madness cards out to make it work with Chainer. I think Chainer is a great build around, but in this case, I think it's actually better synergizing with the Commander rather than being the Commander himself. Uh, Grevin, just in the colors... Got some card draw stable onto it, but it's a very convoluted way to get cards into your graveyard, so we don't recommend that. And Crick, of course, being mono black, you can't run it as the commander, but it is just generically extremely powerful. You don't need to necessarily abuse the ability. You'll just be happy You'll when just you draw. Be it. Happy when you have the ability, and just yeah. using the ability is is already powerful enough. Yeah, so. the fact that there are so many madness cards tells us that Anya's got to be the commander of this deck, because otherwise, you every time you draw one of those, you don't want twenty percent of your deck. <laughs> 
to not be at his maximum efficiency. And yeah. Anya is what sort of makes those madness cards the best they can the be. The best. Yeah, because yeah. you're still going to discard them. You'll still get the mana triggers off of them. But you can only do his discard ability once a turn. Uh, you could do it more. Right. Oh, no. You no, can no, activate yeah. it only once yeah, a turn. You're right. So you're not able to, for instance, with Anya, tap, discard the mana's card, maybe cast it, untap it, do it again, do it again, do it again. So Channer, again, it synergizes with Anya, but isn't great as the lead singer here. Yeah, okay. All right, let's talk about the best cards in the deck. I'm so happy about this one. It's Squee. It's Squee, Goblin, to Bob, because with Anya, it's just the... You just want to be chucking this guy in the garbage bin every so single good. chance you can get. When you play this deck, that you're like, please draw Squee, please, please draw, draw Squee. Please draw Squee, yeah. <laughs> Two and a red for a 1-1, one, one, legendary creature Goblin, so that's why it's the best card in the deck. Uh, <laughs> at the beginning of your upkeep, you may return Squee from your graveyard to your hand. So the turn order goes like this. Josh's turn is before mine. He says, go to my end step, pass my turn. I activate Anya, I drop Squee into the graveyard, I draw a card, and then I untap, Squee comes back to my hands. So, so it's as if you just tapped Anya to draw a card. Draw a card, yeah. yeah. So Squee, very good in that regard, and you can just use him over and over and over again. If you get this engine going early, you're going to have an amazing amount of card advantage, uh, especially in black and red, which is something that I just didn't think I would ever say, to be honest. The next card on the best cards in the deck list is Bone Miser. This is a new one. Four and a black for four four zombie wizard. Whenever you discard a creature card, you create a two two black zombie creature token. Whenever you discard a land card, you add black black to your mana pool. And whenever you discard a non creature non land card, you draw a card. Yeah, almost every madness card is a non creature non land card. So. This is just an additional benefit that gets tacked on to already discarding. So mm -hmm. if you have Chainer out, you're discarding something to make it so you can cast something out of your graveyard, you still get these abilities. Yeah, and more or, importantly, this card says whenever you discard a card. Yeah. There was a card that did this almost exact same thing as an enchantment, but it's whenever an opponent discards a card. So in this case, Bone Miser uh, is for the decks that want to be discarding their own cards. Seems um, really, really sweet because you could discard a card and like three good things could happen for you. And yeah. you're not even really discarding it because it's got madness, right? Or it's squee. Mm -hmm. So even if you're discarding a land, you're adding mana. So now you have your reason to maybe use Anya during your main phase because you're ramping by doing stuff like that. So I could definitely see this getting out of control really quickly here. Really cool. Um, and of course, Chainer, I also listed as one of the best cards in the deck. Every, everything it does synergizes well with Anya and it can also just get people out of nowhere because there are a lot of cards that get cards from your graveyard to the battlefield and they're gaining haste. Big deal. Uh, the next card on here is Nightmare Unmaking. One of my favorite new board wipes right here. Yeah, there's another new card. Three black black for a sorcery. It says choose one. Exile each creature with power greater than the number of cards in your hand, or exile each creature with power less than the number of cards in your hand. This deck is perfect at shaping how many cards are in your hand. It's true, because with Anya, you could even choose to rummage not a Madness card mm -hmm. or not a Squee just to get a card less in your hand. Um, oh, I guess you end up You're with the same the amount. Yeah, but, but, but you could get one extra if you do like the Squee thing on your end step or whatever. Yeah, there's a lot of different ways to discard cards in this deck, and... Anya is, I mean, eventually you are going to be lower on cards and Anya, you know, like Anya, Chainer, ways to get cards out of your hand. Um, even if you're drawing into a card that lets you discard cards more, Anya yep. is going to get you to the point where you can really sculpt Nightmare Unmaking to... Yeah, and you say, okay, well, I want to get all right the big nightmare. creatures, so I'm going to do this, yeah. or I want to get all the small creatures, I'm going to do this, yeah. Yeah, Pretty so cool. modular board wipe's always good. Uh, the last two best cards in the deck are actually the ones that I really took the direction of adding the cards in. And they are more on the expensive side, but they're very powerful, especially when you can get them to synergize. It's Flare of the Hatebound and Warstorm Surge, both cards that care about creatures entering the battlefield from your graveyard. So I'll read Warstorm Surge first. It's got five and a red for an enchantment. It's whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So it can be cast. Uh, you can have it cheated in from the graveyard, whatever you want. You can madness it out. It's going to just blap someone for a lot of damage. And this this adds up so fast. Yeah, yep. Like Caravac the Merciless is one of those cards. There's many times you like, just kill players with it. Yeah, 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 totally. Where you're just like, oh, these last three, I'm just going to point at your face. You're dead. Flavor of the Hatebound does the same thing, except it's when a creature enters the battlefield from your graveyard. Mm -hmm. But then it deals damage equal to its power to any target. And Flavor of the Hatebound is five and a red for a 4-2 that has Undying. So, so it, it itself comes back from the graveyard and then domes somebody for five. Instead of four, yeah. Yeah, it's... If that card sticks you'll win because it's just so much damage coming yep. out of like your graveyard. And you're going to get people out of node with Anya casting creatures for cheap madness costs. Uh, and uh, that's sort of the direction I took with the cards I wanted to add into the deck, which is like, how can you really abuse this very powerful part of it? Because I found that the deck, madness cards just 
aren't that great overall. Right. They're Their value, thin. if you do it right, but the, each individual one is not that strong. Yeah, so yeah. What, what is a real way for a deck like this to close out the game and, and take over? And I think and those I, cards point you in that direction. Yeah, and I think we didn't talk about this for the last deck, but for this deck, when playing it, that was the problem. I think this is, out of the box, the weakest deck mm-hmm. of the four. Uh, it can still win, and I think it's still strong. And still probably better than most pre-cons in the past. It has the potential to have the best start, for yeah. sure. But it can definitely, it definitely get the value in rolling early. Yeah. But it, there's no clear way to close out the game. So we would see a lot. Like, the deck's doing a lot of cool things, and the player's doing stuff, and their board looks, you know, there's stuff out there, and the engine's going, but mm-hmm. it just doesn't have a lot of punch. Yeah. It doesn't It doesn't get to a point where you're like, uh-oh, that's now going to kill us all. <clears throat> so that's, that's kind of one of the things that was missing. All right, let's talk about the notable reprints in the deck. This yeah. is probably the second single most expensive card or maybe it was the most expensive card uh as far as reprints yeah it hasn't besides been seaborn in a while. muse yeah i do love this card though it's geth lord of the vault for black black for a five five legendary legendary creature zombie so actually this is another option for commander if you want to play one out of the deck well or build one around this card it's got intimidate this creature can't be blocked except by artifact creatures or and or creatures that share a color with it usually not too relevant what is relevant, though, is X in the black. Put target artifact or creature card with convert the mana cost X from an opponent's graveyard onto the battlefield under your control tapped. Then that player puts the top X cards of their library into their graveyard. So you're milling them, getting more targets. You also get to do this for a pretty cheap cost. It's X in a black, so you're only really paying one extra for it. You don't need to worry about the color of the card as well. It can get artifacts and creatures. It's going to definitely affect Warstrom Surge and Flare of the Hatebound as well. Yep. So, big time. Yeah, it's... Oh, sorry, not, not Flare. War oh, because that's only yeah, your has, graveyard. Yeah, your graveyard, yeah, sorry. So with Geth, think about that. Because it's card draw, basically. It's card advantage. Because mm-hmm. you get something out of an opponent's graveyard, you only pay one extra mana to draw it and play it, basically. And then they mill. Yeah, so, yeah, that card. You can keep no going. wonder it was like $10. Yeah, don't do it to someone that wants to mill themselves, though. Well, unless the creature's really awesome. True. It's true. It's <laughs> or the point. artifact. Yeah. Uh, the next notable reprint is Overseer of the Damned. Five black black for a five five flying demon. When it enters the battlefield, you can destroy target creature. Pretty good. And then whenever a non-token creature an opponent controls dies, create a 2-2 tapped black zombie creature token. You don't care if it's the creature that Overseer killed, right? Mm-hmm. Anytime their creature dies while Overseer is out, you'll get a zombie. And Warstrom Surge just is like, hey, get Oh, to my me. lord, Bring that's so good because, yeah, you create the zombie, which does two damage to something, kills it, create or another like. zombie. Woo! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> or about like, yes. Another notable reprint, new art, but also this card just is always going to be climbing in price over time because every deck wants to play it. This is kind of like Thrain Dynamo in yep. the last deck. It's Solemn Simulacrum, Simulacrum, SS, However we say it, it will be wrong. Save our ship. Uh, <laughs> four mana for a 2-2 artifact creature, Golem. When it enters the battlefield, you may search your library for a basic land card, put it on the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library, and when the Solemn S dies, you may draw a card. Solemn S? SS value. Sad, Solemn, Simulacrum. Sad robot. Uh, yeah. It's a classic card in black and red that doesn't have great ways to ramp. It's going to get you a land as well as draw you a card. It's got it all stable on there. There is recursion in this deck, so being able to get it back out a couple of times will get extra lands and extra cards. So and the art on this one good. is super cool. Yeah, it's one of Thank the... You. Is it a promo art or something? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I think it might just be brand new. It's sweet. Uh, another notable reprint is Chaos Warp. Two in a red for an instant. The owner of Target Permanent shuffles it into their library, then reveals the top card of their library... If it's a permanent card, they put it onto the battlefield. The outcome of this is generally that it's a, well, like something like 35% of the time, it'll be a land. Mm -hmm. Uh, And the rest of the time, well, a lot of times it's not a permanent. Sometimes it's a sorcery. Yeah, instant. And then most of the time, it's just not as bad as what you were getting rid of because you were getting rid of something that's horrible and yeah. was going to win the game. You, you know? do have a chance of getting it back the onto same thing? the... Yeah, that's never I've happened to me, ha- but you've seen it happen. I've seen it happen with Craig. Yeah, I got rid of an Avenger of Zendikar and out came an Avenger of Zendikar. <laughs> <laughs> so it just made more plant tokens. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. But it was rough. In general, it answers any permanent. So if they've yeah. got a guy's cradle that's just going off, you can still get rid of it, which and, is, and is it's, good. And it's this deck's way of dealing with stuff like enchantments and yeah, things that red, red and black, and black can't deal with enchantments. With. Yeah. yeah. Uh, finally, last noble reprint is Gyre Reach Sanitarium. It's a legendary land. You can just tap it to add a colorless mana, or you can tap to pay two and tap it for each player to draw a card and discard a card. You're, in general, going to be using that ability better than everyone else at the table. So, 
Good land also was getting up there in price, but pretty pretty neat. Especially again, black red needs ways to generate card draw. Yeah, because of madness, you're discarding a madness card that you're then casting, mm -hmm. so you don't lose that card. Still drawing the card. Everybody else is equal on cards. You're up one. Yeah. So that's pretty good. And madness again, you can do it instant speed, so you can do it on someone else's turn, so you're getting the full value out of when you can trick people, even if it's like a sorcery or whatever. That's actually a really good point too. Is that you want discard outlets that maybe aren't your commander in case it gets removed, mm -hmm. and this get puts it on a land so that you can allow yourself to do tricky stuff yeah, at instant speed. Very, very safe. Uh, we looked at the approximate reprint value. We added all the cards up, and this deck was around $76 when we did the reveal podcast for the whole deck list. That's, again, a lot of the cards, it seems kind that's, of tricky. That's just the reprints, not yeah. the new cards, yeah. Because some people are like, where are you even getting that number from? Well, it's like a lot of these cards, like Chaos Warp, Solemn, you know, they're right above $2, and there's a bunch of them in the deck, and that's going to add up over the whole course of the deck. So I think that's one of those things that people don't realize as much. They're not looking to find one just big smack dab sort of Feast of Famine that costs X number of dollars. It's, it's sort of split across a lot more stuff. And there is a Geth in here that was around $10 before the reveal, mm -hmm. so there is one decent size reprint, yeah. and then a bunch of, you know, somewhere in the 3 to $4 range. So the value, oh. I think, is pretty good. One more thing about Geth, you only need a Taplin to use his ability. So oh, you can right. use it multiple times a turn as well. All right. And it's the part that you've all been waiting for. 10 cards. 10 cards to put into this deck. 10 cards to take out, Josh. We have $25 for this exercise. And we're approximately. Gonna, approximately, yeah. yeah. I, actually I think I in, was like 2620 or oh, something. Josh, I came in at 23 Wow. You know? Well, let's see. I took the extra money you saved and spent it on the Sultai deck. Nah, all right. <laughs> Well, let me know what you do for the other ones, so, okay. I, can, so I, I might get some free value out there. <laughs> so I, again, I was looking at the deck, and ways to finish the players off, ways to win the game are really important. Uh, I've won a game on Game Nights with Warstorm Surge before, mm -hmm. so I wanted to find more ways to bring stuff back from the graveyard. Because once it hits the bin, this deck doesn't actually have that many ways to interact with the stuff. So I thought, you know what, let's do some ways that do. And one of my favorite things to do in Black Red is play Balthor the Defiled. Yep. It's a legendary creature, Zombie Dwarf 2-2. Two -two. Minion creatures get plus one plus one well if only there were actual minions in this deck that this holy crap i didn't even with. think that that yeah. would ever come into play so Balthor makes chainer and crick bigger <laughs> worth it totally worth it right Super there worth it who yeah. cares what else is on the card uh yeah especially <laughs> if it says black 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 exile Balthor the defiled each player returns all black and all red creature cards from their graveyard to the battlefield so even if your player of the hate bound sitting in the graveyard you can bring it back, and you are just doming people now with the Warstorm Surge out. It's one of those big, Oof. flashy plays. You've discarded all the stuff. Maybe used Anya to discard a bunch, and Channer as well. And then, blam, out of nowhere, Balthor is just going to get them all back. Now, your opponents also are affected by this, but you're probably going to get more value than they are. I mean, doubtful they're in specifically black-red like you are, so they're probably getting only half value out of that. And yeah. then also, you know you have this card. You're aggressively dumping things into the bin to get mm -hmm. ready to do it, probably doing it at a point where it's advantageous for you. If it's ever going to be better for them than you, you probably won't do it. Yeah, exactly. Balthor, really good with Crick because... Oh my gosh, he just costs no mana at all. You can pay his cost with... Yeah, exactly. And Crick's a minion! <laughs> ah! <laughs> Crick and Balthor are BFFs. Yeah, actually, though. <laughs> Talk about maybe accidentally playing cards to the advantage of your opponent. Oh, yeah. I mean, maybe. That may have happened uh, maybe once or twice. Yeah, this is definitely, yeah, it's one of those cards that, if you play it at the wrong time, can backfire on you magnificently. But again, you're the deck that wants to be putting things in their graveyard more than their players. It's Living Death. Three black black for a sorcery. Each player exiles all creature cards from their graveyard, then sacrifices all creatures they control, then puts all cards they exile this way onto the battlefield. This pairs well with the bajuka bogs of the world so you can stop someone else from doing crazy things. Oh, yeah. uh, this is great. I added some sacrifice outlets in later that we'll talk as well because well, you can just sacrifice everything on your battlefield in and response, play yeah. Living Death or with Crick pay for the mana cost or you know, do all sorts of crazy things. Yep. And then blam, all those creatures come back on the battlefield. Uh, hopefully, again, like Balthor, it's a more one-sided thing for you than other players. Yeah, you're definitely going to be able to. And again, if it's not, then you won't necessarily use it. Yeah, and for a card this powerful, uh, it's kind of surprising. It's it's actually a, sitting around three dollars. That is a very powerful card and a staple card in Commander. You see it all the time. Yeah, it's the kind of card that always blows me out. This next one is uh, Torrent of Souls, and this was in Commander Prague recently. Uh, it's four black and a red. It's super, super cheap. Uh, so you can pay four it's black or four red. Uh, it's a sorcery. You turn up to one target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. If you pay black in the mana cost to cast this, the creature, creature's target player controls gets plus two plus oh and gain haste until end of turn. So your entire battlefield gets pumped up if you pay red to do it. So it basically, it, it, it's like 
you do both. You're going to pay and black red. and red. Yeah, because yeah. you just play one black and red in the entire cost. It's not just the higher mana cost to do it. So your creatures are going to get plus two, plus zero, and they're going to gain haste. And you're going to return one creature card from yeah. your graveyard to the battlefield? The haste is for if you pay red, and the black is for plus two, plus zero. But you're probably going to pay for both. You're going to get a big pump up. And again, with Warstorm Surge getting blockers out of the way, all your creatures getting pumped up, this is a very fast and very quick win condition. That again can just get people out of nowhere. Pretty cool. I like that card. The next one is another commander staple. It's Victimize. I'm two. surprised this is so cheap, too. This card is incredible. Yeah, I'm surprised it's not in the deck. But they didn't go for a lot of recursion in the deck, so I like yeah. that you're adding that because it did feel like the deck needed recursion. It felt like, oh, I'm going to put some stuff in the bin, and then you're like, I assumed I was going to be able to get that back, but it's actually yeah. kind of hard the way that it's built. Yep. Uh, so Victimize is two and a black for a sorcery. You choose two target cre creature cards in your graveyard, sacrifice a creature, and then if you do, you return the chosen cards to the battlefield tap. So... You, it's a two for one, right? You sacrifice one creature, you get two back out. Yeah, you do spend sacrifice a spell squee. as well. But yeah, you can sacrifice squee. You can sacrifice you just even a token, a zombie token, tiny, something you don't yeah. even care about. And there's a way to cheat mana cost too, because it's three mana for victimize, and whatever you sacrifice presumably is not going to be big. And then you could get you know Crick and Flare of the Hatebound out and get thirteen mana worth of stuff for yeah. your three mana, basically. Flare of the Hatebound is already annoying. They have to kill it once and then kill it with Undying. And now if you're, you're just <laughs> getting it again. Undying is just really annoying the players at that point. Yeah, brutal. Um, finally, one of my favorite black spells because it's Underrated an instant. Card. Yeah, it's an instant. It's Wretched Confluence. Three black, black. Choose three. You may choose the same mode more than once. So, target player draws a card and loses one life, or target creature gets minus two, minus two, and until end of turn, or return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So, it's got a lot of options on here. You're probably going to do a mix of drawing cards and returning creatures to your hand, but sometimes you just need to get a creature out of the way too, or you might just do this to draw three cards and lose three life. It's such a good card, very underplayed. There's so many little utility creatures. A lot of times you're like, kill your Oracle of Moldiah, mm -hmm. draw a card, and then I'll return this to my hand. Yeah, so that's it was, absurd for five mana. It was mana. a five mana instant that, yeah, drew you two cards and killed something. Yeah. Yeah, really good. Pretty good. Yeah, so it's very flexible. It's one of those cards I think that, you know, they put it in any Commander product originally, so I think it does belong in most, especially if you're just starting out Commander decks, because it just gives you so many options, and it helps you get back into the game or draw cards, do whatever you need to do. Oh, this next card, this is one of the first cards I thought of when I first saw the deck. It's Anger. Yeah, cards that you want to put in your graveyard now. Yeah, so this is three and a red for a creature. It's a 2-2, two -two, but it says as long as Anger is in your graveyard and you control a mountain, creatures you control have haste. So yep. you just pitch this to Anya very early in the game, and it's just an, basically an enchantment, but it sits in your graveyard and gives everything haste. Mm-hmm. Very, very, very scary. Just don't living death it out. When you've got things like Greven and stuff in the deck too, where it's just like that thing can come out of nowhere. Yeah, Greven with haste is actually really yeah. good. Um, I'm surprised that Anger wasn't in the cards they put in the deck originally. It's just that alongside Squee are just two of the classic cards you always want to be able to pitch or put into your graveyard in some yeah, way. Yeah. But yeah, Anger is going gonna, is gonna to make your whole deck more powerful. And for a very cheap price, it's going to have a huge impact. Uh, next up, I wanted a little bit more Persist in here or Undying-esque effects. And we have Murderous Red Cap, one of uh, Alex Kester's favorite cards, a great card in Modern. It's two and then hybrid Rakdos, so black, red, black, red. It's a 2-2. Two -two. When Murderous Red Cap enters the battlefield, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. When it dies, if it has no minus one minus counters on it, it persists and comes back with a minus one minus one counter on it, so it does one more damage. Uh, this just pairs up well, again, with Flare and Warstorm Surge. It's a really easy thing to, to pitch. It's also really great to just play, kill something, and then when it dies, you get a little extra value out of it. It's a very high-value card, and being able to recur it, this is just one of those cards you see it, and you're like, ruh row. it's yeah. going to do work. Yep. Sometimes it will just kill the whole table, too. All right, the next card is, oh, this is a cool one. It's Combustible Gear Hulk. <laughs> That blew was, up. The, it was gear like how it combusted <laughs> and just blew up <laughs> all right couldn't it's make it four red red for an artifact creature it's a six six with first strike but it's it's got interesting text when it enters the battlefield target opponent may have you draw three cards if that player doesn't put the top three cards of your library into your graveyard and then combustible gear hulk deals damage to that player equal to the total converted mana cost <laughs> of those cards i forget we were playing, I think it was when Evan was here. Uh -huh. I think like DJ did it. And somebody was like, I'll take, I think D was like, oh, I'll take yeah, the damage. Yeah. It took like 15. Because <laughs> <laughs> DJ just, you know, he just. Just flipped flip, some monsters. Yeah. And it was like, oh. 
uh, maybe I should have let you draw three cards. <laughs> yeah, oh, but, but do you really want to let someone draw three cards? Right. It's, it's one of those fun, inter- and especially if you record this out of your graveyard, that oh, happens yeah. again. Yeah, but it, it's synergized. It either gives you card draw or it gives you cards in the graveyard and advances the Warstrom Surge Flare end game plan. So it kind of does a little bit of everything. Very cool. Um, next up is a card that we always mispronounce on the show. It's Viscera Seer. It's not Viscera. It's a. It's actually Viscera, like mascara. I thought it was like viscer, eviscerate. No, it's it's Viscera. Okay. <laughs> I'm just doing it to Sca- troll. <laughs> mascara. It's Mascara Seer. It's a uh, one. It just costs the black for a vampire wizard creature, and I thought this deck needs some more sacrifice outlets or ways to get cards into the graveyard that yeah. aren't just discards. So. So why not one, put in the best one? Yeah, the the best one. Sacrifice a creature, and you can scry one. So sacrifice any creature, including itself. Scry one. Let's say you are about to play Living Death. You just go ahead and just sacrifice everything to the Viscerous here, and then ba-boom, you're in it. It's also really good at just filtering through and finding a card you need. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah in, in like those last moments when you need desperately to find something. Like you did this when you played your Grenzo, uh, Grenzo deck. Grenzo is also an interesting addition. You might be able to put that in your deck as well just to get more cards into your graveyard and occasionally get value and pop them on the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Like Crick, for instance. Uh, the next one is... Ashnod's Altar, another sack outlet, and maybe the best one in all of Commander. It's three mana for an artifact. It just says, sacrifice a creature, add two colorless to your mana pool. And this was just reprinted recently, too. And the thing we learned in our stack episode is that this is a mana ability, so it yeah. gets around a lot of um, instant speed type of stuff. It's it's It has interesting interactions with the stack because it creates mana. Yeah, it's almost almost like a special ability morph kind of thing where you can use yeah. it outside the rules a little uh, we bit. We need Danny here to really explain it, but anyway, look that up because there are some interesting uh, corner cases that... Anyway, mostly you just use it to sacrifice your creatures and get two mana, get them into the bin, reuse them, get around living death, yeah. uh, get them back for a Flare of the Hatebound or Warstrom Surge or something, or, something or like that. Or instantly trigger Flare or, of the Hatebound or Murderous Red Cap because they're going to persist or undie back to the battlefield. Yeah. A lot of times you're like, if I just had two extra mana, I could cast this amazing thing. I'm going to just sacrifice something that doesn't matter that much and do that and get the mana yeah good with uh, squeeze too very very good times okay all right let's talk about some cards Ooh, that was a good one with force this time with <laughs> uh feeling uh cards to take out this one wasn't as hard for me there are so many madness cards in the deck that i was happy to take a couple of them out because they weren't a super high impact and there are a bunch of other sort of like the filler cards that you find in decks that are cards that are really for one of the other for commanders. something else or just a really interesting card that may be See that may see use in another deck or another archetype someday, but just because it was in the colors or they had space for it, they put into this one. The first is Skyfire Phoenix. Mm. It's a card that I don't know how many more Phoenixes we need to make <laughs> in that check before everyone says, like, we're good. We are good. Well, maybe somebody wants to make Phoenix Tribal. That's right. I'm so sorry if that's you. I apologize. That was really Well, they don't rude. have a Phoenix Tribal uh, commander yet, right? More of fun. Yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I right. walked into that one. <laughs> Two red red for a 3-3 three, three creature, Phoenix with haste and flying. When you cast your commander, return Skyfire Phoenix from your graveyard to the battlefield. Look, you could put this in the deck, but I just think you're much better off with something else. The problem is your commander has to be out to do the discard thing with it. Yeah. <laughs> and then so you're casting it a second time. I mean, not that that'll never happen. It's just, man, Squeeze is just so much better. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I would rather have something like Reassembling Skeleton, which I think is in the deck. It is in the deck, yep. Just so I can choose when to do it rather than like I have to do a very specific thing. Yeah. And yeah. this is cool, though. I could see this seeing some play somewhere. Really? No. <laughs> He's I'll just trying to be nice. To the Phoenix Travel person. <laughs> to the... To the <laughs> they exist, Josh. They are players, too. I'm the one who pointed them out. <laughs> you are the Phoenix Travel player. I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, the next one uh, that we have on our list of cards to take out is Blood Hall Priest. Two black red for a 4-4 vampire cleric. Whenever it enters the battlefield or attacks, if you have no cards in hand, if you have no cards in hand, it deals two damage to any target. Woo, two damage. (laughs) And then it has madness for one black red. Here's the problem with cards that say if you have no cards in hand. You will never do that, and if you are, I'm sorry, you lost already. Yeah, if you have no cards in hand, you're, you're, it's, I don't, even if you're in a Madness deck, there's maybe like th- two or three decks in the format that really actually want to have no cards in hand. Yeah. Most of the time, you just, that's the, you're just you never going to be there. I was talking to Wes about this, too, and he has Madness as a theme in his cube, yeah. and he's really looking forward to this deck, but you know, one of the problems he said with Madness is just that historically, the cards... Because they don't want to make them too powerful. They're, they're not so hard that to design. great. Yeah. Uh, and so a lot of them are sort of on the middling level. And, and Blood Hall Priest is definitely, I think, on the... A lot of them are just 
value cards in that yeah. they're basically like imagine a card said draw a card on it. That's kind of what madness is because you're supposed to discard it mm -hmm. ostensibly for some other effect and then. So they can't have it do much because it basically draws you a card in that in, in those instances. Yeah, or yeah. it's just like a, a decently cost of removal spell. Yeah. All right, Wildfire Devils is the next card that would take out three in a red. It's a new card, 4-2. Uh, as Wildfire De When Wildfire Devils enters the battlefield at the and at the beginning of your upkeep, choose a player at random. That player exiles an instant or sorcery card from their graveyard. Copy that card. You may cast the copy without paying its mana cost. This is just too random for my tastes. It can have a lot of value, though. I, I think that this can be something that's super great, but... If it doesn't hit, then you just have a four mana do nothing. I mean, I this is another card when I played the deck that I just discarded to Anya to get a different card because yeah. I held it in my hand for a while, and there was two players that didn't even have an instant or sorcery in their graveyard, and yeah, so I was like 50-50 chance of getting nothing, first of all. And then another player, I was like, it's turn eight. Yeah, I could get their Farseek. You know, it just, there's nothing really great. Usually there's two or three things you'd want to get, but mm -hmm. the percentage chance of actually hitting one of those is small. This is and like Wizard's way of giving card advantage to red, but keeping it sort of in the chaotic sense. I guess so. It's not great, though. I wish you could at least choose the player, and then it would randomly yeah. choose one of their sorceries. Like, let me choose part of it. Or, like, randomly select a player, but then once it selects them, I get to choose which instant yeah, or sorcery. Yeah, because they're the ones that also get to choose which instant or sorcery yes. you get. So you may not even get a good one. Yeah, so then it's just like, uh, you have no agency at all over it, and there's yeah. just too many ways for it to go horribly wrong, and you spent four mana and did nothing. Yeah, and then you have to wait for your upkeep to do it again. Yeah. Not a fan. All right, the next one is Alchemist's Greeting. It's four and a red for a sorcery. It deals four damage to target creature and it has madness for one in a red so just a really generic madness it's like a common with this is like only medium and even in draft yeah and because it's a sorcery you're not getting the full value out of it unless you madness cost cast it i found myself playing games and just holding this in my hand being like i don't want to discard it yet because i want to pay for it but at the same time when do i have i felt like i didn't have an opening to do it and i didn't want to cast it for five mana that's for right sure. right as a sorcery Ugh. yeah Next up, we have Hate Mirage, another new card. Three in a red for a sorcery. Choose up to two target creatures you don't control. For each of those creatures, create a token that's a copy of that creature. Those tokens gain haste. Exile them at the beginning of the next end step. I would like this a lot more if it just stole the creature and gave them back. Because it's making a token copy, it's not You're not as even great. taking a blocker. Yeah, and you don't have, you know, you would be able to use your sack outlets, for instance. I guess you get ETBs? Yes, you get ETBs. This, in this environment with the pre-cons, it's pretty bad because none of those decks really have ETBs. Morph Stone, yeah. ETB, Token. I guess Gearhead kind of does, but like in general, the Populate Tokens don't. The Jeskai stuff it doesn't even have very many creatures. Yeah. <laughs> in like a really high-powered meta, you might find some amazing creatures you can get with Hate Mirage, but they do get exiled, so you can't even use them for longer than... It's like a very temporary spell. Sundial of the Infinite or something would already have to be in your deck for that to be any good, probably. It could be probably. a big effect, but yeah. I just don't think it works in this shell. Casing. I agree. Uh, the next one is a card we took out of the Sultai deck as well. And I think, like, they're trying with this card, but it's just still not playable. Mire and Misery, one in a black for a sorcery. Each opponent sacrifices a creature or enchantment. What if it said creature and enchantment? Ooh. Maybe you make it cost three? Then I think you would play it, because at least I'm going to get their enchantment. There's just too many ways for this to be... To backfire. Or just to be unusable, where you know you're going to pay the mana, waste a card, and basically not get any of the stuff you want. They've got yeah. a creature, but you want to get rid of their enchantment. Yeah, when you're playing with 100-card decks, being like, I hope I draw this at the exact right time, which is like somewhat early game or like right after a board wipe kind of thing, that it's just not going to go the way you want it to. Also, think about the fact that like, what is edict effects, make your opponent sacrifice things, what are they good against? Voltron decks. Yeah. Okay. But now I'm giving them the chance to, instead of sacrifice their creature with all the stuff on it, sacrifice one of the things on it. Right. Which is way worse. So this card's even worse, I think, <laughs> than just a regular each opponent sacrifices a creature, or even each player sacrifices a creature. It looks better because it says or enchantment, but I think the or enchantment actually hurts it more than it helps it because there's way more situations where the enchantment is going to allow them to keep a creature around yeah. then it's... those decks do have a bunch of enchantments either on the side or on the creature too yeah and then the other times where it's like how often does they've only got an enchantment out and no creatures right mm -hmm. whereas like if it's a really powerful enchantment you want to get rid of like a grave pact or something this is not going to do it they're going to sacrifice a creature yeah it, the thing about my misery is i just i we, there are effects that are so similar to it if you can find a way to make sure you get the enchantment, then sure, go for it. But uh, It's just rarely going to happen that yeah. way. Yeah. You already have Castle Warp, you already have Fleshbag Marauder type effects in the deck, so you've got ways to deal with that stuff. 
Uh, the next is Hedonist Trove, a card that I've wanted to play for a long time, but it just it gets, it's just it has too, a lot of text on it. Just cost too much. Five black black for an enchantment. When Hedonist Trove enters the battlefield, exile all cards from target opponent's graveyard. I mean that's a relevant effect. You may play land cards exiled with Hedonist Trove, and you may cast non-land cards exiled with Hedonist Trove. You can't cast more than one spell this way each turn, so you do need to pay the mana for them. You can only do it once a turn, and this already costs seven mana to do it. It needs to say pay mana is over mana of any color. Well, the idea is that you can play their lands to play but their cards, but it's just not most going decks just to. don't have lands in their graveyard naturally. And if they do, their fetch lands, which don't help you cast their spells because you have to fetch your own deck with yeah, their fetch lands. Exactly. Yes, this is just sorry, not not. It needs to say pay mana is over mana of any color. Yeah. Even then, it's only borderline maybe okay playable. It's not like that would have broken it. Yeah, seven mana, that's a lot. Yeah. Uh, the next one is key to the city, two mana for an artifact. You can tap it to discard a card. Could be a madness card. And up to one target creature can't be blocked to this turn. So it makes something unblockable. And then whenever key to the city becomes untapped, you may pay two generic mana. And if you do, you draw a card. Yep, there's a lot of discard outlets in the deck already. So if you're wanting to get this for the discard outlet, it's whatever. There are good ways to draw cards in the deck already. You can this do that This is a really too. expensive way to draw cards. Yeah, really. and like maybe if you're running Grevin as your main commander, this would be better. So you make him unblockable. And but this doesn't actually draw cards, right? It just rummages and a slow yeah, rummage. You have at that. to wait until you're yeah. untapped to do it. You know, there it's. I I didn't. This was one of the harder cuts for me actually because it did say card draw card in it, and anytime you see that in black and red, you're like maybe I should give a little extra attention to it. But in this case. Eh, just you gotta cut enough. something near the end and it's gonna yeah. get harder as it goes like this one's a little bit of a hard cut too because there are times when it's great yeah and but there are lots of times where it's not yeah and this one of those cards where i want to see it in another deck i just don't know which deck that is it's aeon engine really interesting card five mana for an artifact it enters the battlefield tapped and you can tap and exile it to reverse the game's turn order so this is extremely powerful because you can just skip one player so let's say there are four players at the table me josh uh craig and ashlyn I take my turn, and the engine's untapped. I pass the turn. I, I don't want Josh to have a turn is what it's going to be. I pass the turn to, uh, let's say we're going to Ashlyn and then to Craig. And before it gets to Josh's turn, I activate the Aeon engine, and it reverses the turn order. And then all Ashlyn of a sudden, gets another turn. Jimmy gets another turn before. So it's now been one, two, three, four, five players before my turn where it normally would have been three. Three, yeah. Or you can do it where I pass the turn, and as soon as it gets to Ashen, I reverse the turn order, and again, another turn immediately. So I get two turns in the court, sort of like almost like an extra turn effect. So there's lots of different ways to use this, um, but I don't think it's great in this deck particularly. Yeah, you gotta be able to abuse it in some weird way, Bring and it it's back. too hard for it to not work, because what if the scary player is the person after you? Mm -hmm. Well, you have to it activate it on your, your turn, turn and then which you're means losing out then yeah. you're losing out you're hurting yourself and so i think that's part of the problem with the card it's super interesting design I, I i like that they did it and there may be some ways to like recur it and reuse it or something that will make it interesting but i think you need a lot of pieces and if you don't have them it's just not worth having it in yep yeah all right the last card to take out is bloodthirsty blade it's two mana for an artifact equipment equip creature gets plus two plus oh and is goaded which means it attacks each combat if able and attacks a player other than you if able, which is really weird because it's your equipment. <laughs> so how does this work? Well, you pay one and you attach the Bloodthirsty Blade to target creature and opponent controls, but you can only activate this ability as a sorcery. So you play this, activate, put it on their scariest thing, and now they must attack with it and attack not you or a plane or I actually think this card is kind of cool and I like yeah. the design around it, but again, it's one of those things where it's like, it may not go as well as you want it to go. It I think, is cheap, though, to play. Two mana for and a one mana activated. It's not that it does nothing, because it definitely does stuff when it's played, but how is this deck in particular taking advantage of this effect? And it's really not. Yeah. This would go maybe in the, uh, what's the wall deck that says you can only attack left or right? Oh, yeah, or, yeah the one that just, yeah, the Jeskai wall that just came out. Or some out. kind of like Zancha deck or something where like you are messing with their ability. Maybe the Zergo Helm Smasher Marisi kinds. deck or something yeah. where you're, the goal of the deck is to mess with their ability to, you know, do things the way they want to. Whereas yeah. that's not really what this deck is doing. Yeah, I think the main win condition here is your War Storm Surge Flare type cards or just getting things back and outvaluing people uh, and doing it more in bigger impactful ways. 
So those are the 10 cards we will remove to put in the 10 cards that I talked about that I kept at a very nice 23-ish dollars. So you're welcome. <laughs> uh, but, fired. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I think I think this deck has a lot of potential. It just needs that boost to take it outside of the, you know, it, it it's fast, it ramps fast, it or sorry, it ramps into its game plan really quickly. So if there's ways to just bolster that. Um, other cards I could see you adding in or a little bit more ramp, maybe a couple more board wipes. Uh, unfortunately, damnation was that would have actually been more than the entire uh, <laughs> price that we it, had. That was your Vidalcanori. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> so there are ways to I think again adjust it to your meta. So if you're like I want less graveyard interaction, I just want more board wipes. You can find ways to do that as well within the budget range. All right, to the listeners, what do you think of this Rakdos deck, and what cards did we miss? Is there anything you think absolutely should go in the deck? as a quick upgrade that we didn't talk about. Remember, we had to stay at approximately $25. Yeah, so, so like really high-end cards were out it, yeah. for us here. Yeah, <laughs> Obviously, add Mana Crypt to the deck, right? If you can, like, yeah, yeah totally. if you've got it. Like, duh. duh. Uh, all right. And if you want to order any of the cards that Jimmy suggested you should add, or you want to order this deck or any of the other C19 pre-cons, please go to cardkingdom.com slash command zone. If you use that affiliate link when you're ordering any of your Magic products, singles, anything at all, you really are supporting Game Nights, this podcast, all of our content. And right now, if you pre-order or order any of the Commander 2019 sealed, sealed. products, you will get a code which will unlock a special. bunch of special lifelinker backgrounds, which yeah. correspond to the color combinations of the C19 With decks. the Card Kingdom logo on top. It's pretty, pretty cool. They actually redesigned their logo to match the Commander 2019 logo a little bit. Oh, that's so, cool. Yeah, it has a little bit of a mixture of both in there. And that's for a limited time. And again, it's only tied to C19. And I keep saying this, but I just don't want you all to be disappointed they sell out every single year. So get on over there, cardkingdom.com slash command zone. Put your order in so you make sure you get your stuff. Yep. And while you're there, check out all of the cool Ultra Pro product that comes out uh, coinciding with the Commander product every single year. You can deck out your Anya deck with the playmat sleeves and deck box and everything. Or if you want to get some of that Rakdos stuff, I think they still have some of the guild stuff from Ravnica. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so tons of ways to make your setup look awesome, all thanks to Ultra Pro. Spice up your battlefield. Okay, yes. we're going to skip the end step. Again, for this podcast and for probably the next couple, just because we're doing so many extra episodes and we don't have that many cool things in our life to talk about. Nope, so. we just have editing. <laughs> That's true. That's uh, it's what we have in front of us. So big thank you uh, to our sister podcast, The Masters of Modern. They're probably going to have a lot to talk about as well because they are commander players. And, you know, I'm sure they're looking at these cards and salivating, being like, why can't that be in modern? They're going to figure out a way to talk about it because Alex likes to talk about stuff. So they'll figure yeah. out a, a way to bring it up some way, yeah. I bet. Yeah. But if you just want to listen to modern talk, go on over and... And search up the MM cast on Twitter or the Masters of Modern on YouTube. They are now posting videos as well as all of your podcast apps should have the podcast as well. Ben Kessler, Penn Kessler, Ben Kessler, and Alex Bateman. <laughs> Those are the hosts. They're definitely named that. Yep. <laughs> all right. Special thanks to Jeffrey Palmer, who does the Living Card animations that begin and end all of our shows. You can find him on uh, Twitter at Living Cards MTG. And big shout out to our editors. Ashlyn Rose and Craig Blanchett for all of the extra work, especially Ashlyn, who's really been carrying the torch for all of this yeah. Commander 2019 stuff. She has really been putting in the extra hour, so thanks, Ash. I found Craig's new favorite card, though. It's definitely Craig. Oh, my gosh. Just That's got, just terrifying in his hands. It's because there are, like, seven instances of the Phyrexian symbol on this card, essentially. So. Also, like, <laughs> how many Infect cards can he now cast for way cheaper because of that? Yeah, like, uh, he doesn't care if his life total is low. No, he doesn't care at all. He just Jeez. cares if your life total is low. Or all actually, right. he doesn't actually care about your life total. He just cares how many poison counters you have. Awful. Yeah. Truly, truly awful. I like that Craig's back uh, working for us again because now we can, you know, talk to him indirectly. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> hey, Craig. Hey, don't, Craig. You're a monster. Don't do that. <laughs> Love All right. you, buddy. All right, everybody. <laughs> Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Peace. Thank you for your attention. For further inquiries, send an email to commandcast at rocketjump.com or ask us on Twitter at JF Wong and at Josh Lee Kwai. See you later, alligator. Greetings, humans. <laughs>